Alright, I know I'm late to the party with the following build, but here's my own attempt on using the Star Eater scales with Blade Barrage. I have seen a ton of talk about how powerful Blade Barrage has become, and combining it with Star Eaters just makes you nuke everything in your pathway. It's the new endgame DPS build for the hunters that can make taking on mini bosses to later bosses with ease with the amount of damage you can pull off. But do remember that the higher the difficulty is, the more likely you will fail with getting the numbers you want. The pros outweigh the cons but the risk is still there and a simple slip up can ruin everything for you. Now if that sounds fine with you, then sit back, relax and let's deep dive into the mess we have created. But before we do that, you know what else is relaxing to watch and listen to? This channel right here, so if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and turn on notifications for more stuff like this in the future, it goes a long way for me. Let's start with the subclass which will be Blade Barrage as this has now become the highest and strongest DPS super for hunters in game currently. If you want to pull off big damage in a single go, you want to be using Blade Barrage as of now as it's been tweaked to be more accurate. We have covered this build before in the past with Star Eaters when it was first introduced and made Dune Vogue a complete joke. Since then, it has had its usage here and there but it was tied down with how risky it was to use them. You have to get 8 stacks now if you want to do maximum amount of damage which is a lot for most content and most combats you face, but simply getting 4 is also doable. For us to maximise our success, I have the following aspects and fragments. For the fragments, as an example, we have Gunpowder Gamble, which allows us to build up an improvised grenade, which does even more damage than normal. We then have Knock Em Down, which gives our Blade Barrage more projectiles. For a fragment, we have Ember Combustion, where Super Final Blows ignite a target, Ember Cindering, where class ability charges faster if a target is scorched, and Ember Eruption, where your solar ignitions have increased area of effect. For stats, you want to have 80 to 100 resilience, 60 to 80 recovery, 70 in discipline and 50 to 60 in intellect. Now do remember that using star eaters will have a lot of risk behind it if you want to get max stats quickly. For this you want to heavily invest into your resilience and recovery so you're always one step ahead. For mods we have well of life for a health regen for a short period, ML ordnance for creating wilds with grenades, frontal might for a 25% solar weapon buff, a frontal wisdom for a plus 15 intellect and passive regen and battle for wealth for creating two worlds instead of one. I know that my version of the build looks odd but that is simply because I'm trying to play as passively and as safe as possible. The build will allow us to do a huge amount of damage easily but I don't see myself getting to 8 stacks all the time and being successful. This should be the same for you when playing the build, only go for the stack you can reach and then do your deed as in master content for example, pulling off 8 stack of star eaters on a boss is impressive but only if you don't die mid super or get one shotted. Getting to a super is easy, but building these stacks afterward will be a bit more difficult depending on where you are based. For this I've gone with weapons that can help with getting me to my level as quickly as possible such as having the submission SMG with perpetual motion and demolitionist and this will help me with getting my grenades up and ready for using them to create orbs of power if I choose to use the ember wonder fragment. Combining that with weighted throw knives and you can produce orbs of power just from abilities alone rather than weapon kills. This would be more preferable for those that enjoy using the 2 combo in hand and can help quickly get to your stacks in record time. Although alternatively, if I'm not using Hobbit like Cypher mods then I'll add in the Ashes to Ashes mod instead and go from there which I like to switch out from here and there. A secondary I have the trusty scout rifle with outlaw and redirection and although having a weapon with incandescent will be better, this can be a great alternative until then. This is definitely worth getting as it takes out minor matching buttons relatively well if you had the redirection perk active and going. As it's also a rapid fire frame it also means you can add on the minor major or boss damage based mod to increase your damage against them further. I do recommend however you try and get a solar weapon that is full auto so you can produce orbs of light quicker. This does not matter what weapon you pick though, anything is fine but full auto is a must. For heavy we have Galahorn as it's a perfect heavy weapon to use as part of the DPS build. Not a lot to say as having two in a tube and then using after you have used your super is the best method available if you want to demolish anything that stands in front of you. Adding on Acrobat's dodge and Front of Might will give you a 56% solo weapon buff which all in all is nuts. If however you fancy more damage than shown then I recommend the Parasite Grenade Launcher which if done right can outright nuke bosses. For the stats I recommend you highly focus on both resilience and recovery so you can do your super in peace and not worry about getting destroyed before it even happens. 
As mentioned, we want to aim for 80 to 100 for both stats as best you can, as building up stacks after is the more harder part. This can be easily covered by doing focus engrams for specific stats and then slotting in whatever stat mod to make the difference. But it's important you do this first and foremost. Also, if we get 100 resilience, then you get a 40% damage reduction, which would absolutely help the following build out in mass level content if you decide that. Your discipline can stay at 70, as your usual grenades here and there, but you can also reduce this down and pump points into recovery and resilience instead, since this stat has more relevance over everything else. If you do this, then slap on the explosive finisher mod, which will grant you a full grenade back on the cost of 150 your super. Since we get our super back quickly, this shouldn't be much of an issue. Your intellect now should be at 50, but if your armor piece just pushes it to 60, then that's also fine. As we have Harmonic Siphon times 2 for creating orbs of power via solar weapon kills, and the Front of Wisdom mod for plus 15 intellect, that should be all you'll need to get your super up and ready. Of course, as mentioned, you can add on the Ashes to Ashes mod or go with the fragment that gives orbs of power from ignited targets. As leftover, we have Rocket Launcher Scavenger for increased rocket reserves and Revitalizing Blast where stunning champions will ignite them and cause a large explosion. Now, as we have covered the main topic of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Mind of Resilience, Homologous Siphon Times 2 and Well of Life mod. Arm, we have Mobility, Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Mobility, because of Damna, Armor, Dying Sun, and Front of Might mod. Leg, we have Mind of Resilience, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Front of Wisdom mod. A Mark, we have Resilience, Revitalizing Blast, Explosive Finisher, and Powerful Well mod. So my thought on the build is that it's great when you're able to pull off the big damage numbers on the bosses alike and see how quickly their health goes from 100 to 0. If you pull a full stack of Star Eaters off on say the Nightmare Cattle in the new dungeon, then you do a hefty amount of damage as a solo person. And then add on the Radiant buff and Heavy being used, I can then see overall you doing around half the boss's health easily and that would be great overall. In a well thought out team, I can see this potentially being a 1 to 2 phase run if everyone is using the correct gear. But the thing about doing something that high octane and the risk behind it is losing all your stacks from a simple error or being pushed off the map or being one shotted. The build has so much risk behind it that it's easy to lose everything you have built up before a damage phase and from there you have to either use your super then then or wait for the next phase to rebuild your stacks again. This is why going for such a max damage run on any boss is so risky if you don't plan out how you'll go about it and what to do if you mess up. Because of the risk, it devaluates its use to only legendary content, where the difficulty is noticeable, but still doable if you play smart. You cannot use this in Master or Grandmaster content as there is no way you'll be able to survive the onslaught and still carry such a huge weight. No matter how you see it, this build can only be used in a limited way and sometimes you'll have no choice but to use the cum stack you have and just get over with. This however doesn't mean the build is made useless, like I said you can still use this in legendary content and dungeons, nightfalls and gambit are the only content I can see where the build can really do some damage. This is where you should aim for as there's less hair pulling and more fun to feel really powerful in. Overall, the build is enjoyable and a great DPS dump in team based activities. As long as you don't overdo it, you can wipe out a boss single handedly without the need of your team. Surely this is something that you'll want to try out every now and then, right? So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.